pulling out of my house right now. It's beautiful. It's still dark. I'm headed back home to meet a good buddy of mine, Thomas Allen Bass, to show him the back rows of kind of where I grew up. A little bit about where I learned to fish, where I had my first job. Uh, kind of reminiscing going to probably what considered one of the toughest fisheries in the state of Alabama, Inland Lake. Uh, not a lot of folks know about it. It's about 1,700 acres. It's, uh, sorry about that. It's right outside of the town of Aniana. It actually supplies the water, uh, part of the water to uh, Birmingham, the city of Birmingham. Not many houses on it. Got to get out of this garage. Turn that country jam down. It's way too early for that. I'm getting fueled up on Black Rifle Coffee. Getting ready to get this day started. Something that just kind of come to mind. It was take to take folks back home. I mean, a lot of guys and girls ask that. Where'd you start fishing? And where'd you learn to fish? And well, I'm fixing to show you. Part of the place I grew up fishing and some of my first bass, the, like really big bass memories, uh, where I started winning jackpot tournaments and fruit jar tournaments to make enough money to keep moving forward and kind of the G Wan style. So it's dark and I'm leaving. That's how fishermen roll. We get up early, we get gone. Well, I look at it, if you ain't starting before sunrise, you might not even do, need to start. Just stay at home, you know, so. Y'all roll with me, roll with me. It's gonna be good, it's gonna be good. Everybody just sit back and chill. We under quarantine. We quarantine, quarantine. Drinking whiskey like vaccine. Yeah, spraying that Lysol like sunscreen. Y'all stay with us. I'm already goofy and it ain't even daylight. From my house back to Illinois, complete drive, I don't know, 55 minutes an hour, but short trip down 79, a lot of memories. Uh, I used to burn this highway up going 79, going the other direction. You know, back when I was started fishing and, and going to Gunners for my old truck with 300,000 miles on a straight pipe. <laughs> up this highway going back home. Man. Love bugs all over the windshield and stuff daily routine, man, when you had a day off work or rain and you could swap lanes. So some of these miles of travel seem long to a lot of people, but like around here, it's just a trip down memory lane, man. Just remember being a kid, riding a bike on a gravel road, you know, wading in a stream, swimming in a pond, you know, living on the edge, drinking water from a garden hose, you know, like just living out there like a freaking maniac. Finally got me one I've been riding around Singing back where I come from And it sounds like angels When those mud tires sing Yeah, I know that sounds crazy But it's a country boy thing About to roll up in the town Of Cleveland, Alabama To the famous Tonka gas station At the four-way crossing in Cleveland which is now about to be the roundabout. I don't know why the hell you put a roundabout in a bunch of country people. Because they're going to run this thing like NASCAR. I can tell you what my buddies are going to do when they pull up to this daggum circle. They're going to say, Boy, tell a dagger done got small. Let's run this thing. You can't put a round around with country people. They're going to run it. Town of Cleveland. Home of the Tonka Station. Famous chicken and biscuit. We even stopped and get me one this morning. I stopped here a million times as a kid growing up back and forth to work and fishing this is your morning commute get your coffee get your biscuits biscuit time the famous chicken finger sandwich on white bread with mustard one for now two for later you gotta keep you scrank fuck. Let's go fishing. It ain't a fishing trip unless you buy some gas. Is Back in the day, <coughs> I used to come in here. I ain't had no credit cards. <laughs> That's when you used to pull up here 
working when you was working. If you didn't work 40 hours that week because you just framing houses or something, you got rained out. He's going to fish it Tuesday night. You wouldn't put by like eight dollars. <laughs> Me and my brother would be like, okay, let's put eight dollars in there. We're gonna fish around the ramp. That's when you had the 175 marker. It's burning about two gallon when you crank it up. So we do a lot of stops right here at this little gas station. Kind of filling up, getting ready to go down the long dirt. It's all used to be dirt road headed down where we're fixing to take you to, but this is kind of cool. We come back up here now. Now I got a credit card. I can fill it up if I want to. I got a brand new boat, new Tundra, great sponsors from when I used to roll in here. Old truck had about 300,000 miles. <laughs> Backfire when you turn it off. Had a hydro sport, then an old Javelin. Just kind of doing what you had to do. Well, you bought eight dollars worth of gas or five dollars worth of gas. Very. I don't ever remember pulling in here and filling it up. That just didn't happen. So we're gonna have a little bit of fun anyway. We're gonna have some fun. This is this is my playground this is my yard this was my Xbox these were my video games I played this is Inland Lake a uh, place where I grew up fishing uh, my father brought me over here in an aluminum boat we paddled around we run a tiller handle motor around but it's also where I had my first true employment outside my working for my father I worked at the little store right here at the boat ramp it's just a little shack man I worked for old man Sims and uh, my job was to put the boats in, take care of the rental boats, anything I could do. I was 15 years old, drove over, made a whopping 22 bucks a day. Saved up enough money to buy my first vehicle. But I learned a lot more at this lake than, than what a regular, what, what you probably think you could learn off a small job. I learned that your imagination as a fisherman and an outdoorsman is a key. Uh, if I only had an hour after work or an hour and a half before it got dark, I would jump in a aluminum boat and I would paddle around. I'd run the trolling motor and I'd fish, man. I got here and fish. And, I didn't have a lot of training. I didn't have any electronics, but my imagination was so good at trying to figure out fishing and understanding and, and realizing what it is to get out and figure something out for yourself. You know, didn't want nobody sharing me no waypoints. If I didn't catch nothing, I didn't catch nothing. But so much learned in one summer as a 15 year old uh, about uh, knowing what it's like for somebody to depend on you to be at work, stay at work, and do your job. Learned a bunch about that. My, after that, you know. It, it, you know, I get out of high school, I still came over here and went fishing. I just kept fishing and fishing. And this lake's tough, man. I mean, it's, it's not the lake you come to catch numbers. But there was always good Tuesday night tournaments, man, big crowds. We'd have 30, 40 boats. We'd line up out there, 10 or 15 boats abreast, 30 boats abreast, and guy got there and dropped the hat and down the lake you'd go, everybody racing to their spot. But what it did is it offered me a chance to make a little money, to put in that fruit jar, to make a little money, you know, to save up to buy my next boat. I had an old Hydra Sport. I wanted to save up and I got me a javelin. But what it did is it showed me how to, to get out here and mix it up, you know, to figure some things out. You only had four hours. But I, I was able with Inland to perfect a technique, a technique that Johnny McCombs and I had worked on on Smith Lake. It was really just buzz bait. We throw buzz bait all night. So you'd fish a five hour Tuesday night tournament. You know, if you could catch three that weighed eight or nine pounds to 11 pounds, you usually won. But we've had some mega sacks over here. But after that, she was like, 
I could do this other place. So Smith and Inland, and then they'd have an all-nighter here, and then it got really good. But what it is, it taught me to make some sacrifices, to learn a Pacific technique, and go with it. You don't have to be the greatest fisherman of 50 different baits. If you're a young angler out there and you want to get started, I'm fixing to show you how I did it at my own home lake right here and how simple it was. I perfected one technique and I never backed off of it. Never. I'd come over here and fish Tuesday nighters. Most of the time with my oldest brother, Tony. I brought my middle brother, Ernie, a few times, but Ernie was a lot more calm than Tony and I. He did not like the reckless 40 boats running down this lake to the S curve. My brother, Tony, fished with me a lot over here. Um, you know, I'm many, many good weigh-ins right here. And he's, he's, he's dead and gone now, and I come over here and I want to go fish today, and I'm probably going to reminisce a bunch about how he used to fish down the bank, and bless his heart, he used to throw in the bushes all the time at night, throw in the bushes, throw in the bushes. I was like, man, you don't see them trees? Said, I don't see them trees. So one day, somebody would get my eyes checked, gee. <laughs> he come out of the eye doctor, he had everything but the dog. I joke about blind, he couldn't see. We come back fishing the next Tuesday night. He said, hey, these trees always been on this bluff. I said, yeah, and I saw all your spinnerbaits hanging in them. So we had a lot of good times uh, to, to come over here, and I don't think I would change uh, nothing in my career. Inland Lake served as part of the platform to launch me into professional fishing. It taught me a lot about life. It taught me a lot about fishing. It taught me to save my money, work hard, and you don't have to get it all at one time. Just chisel away at it. I feel like every time you leave a fish that you didn't catch, you lose confidence. So when you find one and you make your mind up and you want to catch that one, you need to catch him. That biggest one had it and they were looking at each other. And I pulled him just for a little bit before I jerked. Give him just a little too much time. But he'll go right back to doing what he's doing. I gotta let him know it's his friend again. See, I'm shaking it. He's off to the right. He's, he's looking at it. Oh, 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 oh you dirty. Sight fishing is all about quality glasses. Repeating the same cast, repeating the same cast, repetition speed, repetition speed, changing his mood. Whew. Z Crawl Jr. He's on it right now. The male right there. So we're gonna see. People say you can't catch the male. You don't know catch the male first, that's bull crap. You catch whichever one's biting first. Whichever one that bites first, you catch him. Because at Inland Lake, this would be a money fish every Tuesday night if you was over here. Money, money, money. So let's try and repeat that and get old big lips. I, I learned a lot of lessons over here. And some, some maybe I'm not so proud of, some I am, you know. Uh, one thing, one of the first things I learned about this is if you, if you become uh, uh, really uh, consistent, I am not, without boasting, if you, if you win a lot in an area, you're consistently catching them, especially as young anglers. One of the first things you're gonna take is some backlash. And one of the first experiences I had is, is I come over here, my brother Tony, his house had burnt, and I had quit my job to help him build his house, and, and he was late on the car payment, him and his wife, and I was like, what do y'all owe? And I, it was like 400 bucks. I was like, okay, so it was Tuesday night. We got done working on his house, I jumped in my boat, and I come over here to fish by myself. I caught a mega bag that night, like in the 20 pound range, and by myself, and when I come to weigh in, they wouldn't let me weigh in. They said I walked up to the scales one minute late. So from that point on, I was banned from coming to the lake. What they didn't realize is that night is I wasn't fishing to say I won. It wasn't about me. I come over here to win the money for his car payment. And I think that's why I left so angry is I, you know, it wasn't about, hey, I'm better than you. It's just like, hey, I need the money and I come over here and caught him. But I learned early on that, that you're gonna have that in fishing. If you, if you come out to these local lakes, you tell young guys, man, if you catch them good, you're going to get a little whiplash. You're going to get it. And since then, I've been asked not to come back. They've had a couple big daytime tournaments. I come over and won one, and they said, please don't come back because nobody will come back. I take that as a compliment now. I don't take it as, as something uh, derogatory or something that they – it's just it is what it is, you know. Uh, you're going to have that. It's no different as you keep going on. If you really, really catch them, people suspect things. But don't let that get you down. Lesson in life is 
people are quick to judge. That night it wasn't about me. It's just about fishing to win the money, and I thought I'd won it and had it all done. I was gonna take it back and give it to him, and they really pissed me off because they didn't let me weigh in. So that's a big lesson I learned at Inland. Yesterday I went to Smith Lake. Me and Jimmy caught nine over. That ain't bad for up there. Some of them about four pounds. Trey but they're not bedding yet. The water temperature yeah. was like 64, 65. I seen Tony Gilliam, which Tommy Gilliam's little, it might yeah. have been Tommy. I seen one of the Gilliam boys and he had like 12 big crop and he caught and he gave me his and took them home and skinned them. But oh God, they eat good, don't they? We fished it. Hey, if I get this film today, we're gonna go back and try to catch a few more crappie. We didn't quite. I want a. I want a bunch of them. Did you catch them on the G? Crappie? We yeah. were minner fishing. Uh -huh. We had minners. I figured that. But now Tommy caught all them on a little old crappie jig, a little thirty-second ounce crappie jig. We headed down yonder where they at. That's it. <laughs> He'd rig him up about five of them. <laughs> if we ain't won it by then, he got hell, son, let's go. We got work tomorrow. Daddy, have, we get home, all his be broke, just hanging back here in the garage. <laughs> I told him, that's what I used to tell him. I said, I rig up all my rods, different stuff, and when I break the last one off, it's time to go to bed. Even when I had them lake out, I said, yeah. I'd just go to bed. I told Thomas, I said, you come over here and see 10 boats, it's a crowded day. Last Saturday was so but, packed. Except for last Saturday. Well, everybody's off work now. It's a different. There ain't nobody working, nobody in school. You come over here in the wintertime fish all day. It's a dangerous place in the world to fish when it's freezing because you'll be the only boat over here. If you fall in, you're done. The only good thing about it, that's what I was trying to tell you, Mama. The only good thing about it, when he takes your license and your tag number, if you don't show up that night, you got troubles. They'll come hunt you. Yeah. They will come by. So y'all just going to catch enough to eat? No, we're going to catch you twice enough to eat. No, <laughs> in true redneck swindle fashion, I just run into my dad and my nephew over here fishing. So this is the long family history of coming to Inland. <laughs> my daddy's fishing for supper, folks. <laughs> He's fishing for supper, I can promise you. You know, I came from a construction background. My, my father was a carpenter. My, my dad's brothers and my brothers were all carpenters. Uh, so a lot of times, when I got to fish, it was either raining or, or weather was bad. So we would naturally come over here, you know, and that's that. But the, the framing houses is how we were really trying to pay the bills to, to, to afford to go fishing. And it was a huge part of me trying to make it, you know, but I'd have to come home and frame houses, go back out on the road and fish, go out and frame houses. I can remember driving straight back from New York and being on the job on Monday morning. It's just what we did. But I was able to work through construction enough to make enough money to launch my dream. And I had that dream. I had that dream when I was 18, 19 years old, running around on this lake behind me in an aluminum boat. And I would always fantasize, oh, at the Bassmasters Classic, what if it came here and I had 10 minutes to catch one more fish? I had that dream as a kid. I was willing to pursue that dream at all costs. And it's so, it's so ironic that today I'm sitting on Inland Lake. A, a few weeks ago, I was actually inducted into the Blount County Hall of Fame. And that's where this lake is. And who had ever thought that a kid that worked at the boat landing went on to be a carpenter that had a dream of being a bass fisherman that was from Blount County that had no formal training, no college education, no marketing degree, would ever be so consistent or, or per persistent, I should say, to pursue a dream and, and make it. And I think that's, that's the value of a dream. People, it's easy to say, oh, I have dreams, G, I have dreams. We all have dreams. I mean, I dreamed one time Jennifer Aniston liked me, but she don't. Everybody has dreams, but do you have what it takes to pursue that dream at all costs? Because there's going to be bumps, there's going to be bruises, there's going to be letdowns, there's going to be failures. That dream is going to come at a high cost. The question you have to ask, you have the dream, but are you willing to pay the cost? That's what it all come down to. And I think it started real simple. Fishing on a tough lake taught me early lessons that it ain't going to be easy. You just keep working at it. So. Um, I look back in my, my life, the roads around Blunt County are not paved at the time. They were mostly gravel, but them gravel roads led me a long way to where I'm sitting at today in this boat, working, doing stuff for Bassmasters and living my dream, fishing on the biggest tour in the world. So. You seen that first whirly Shirley when he got all over? He's catch boy. I still see him right there. See that dark shadow right there? Cool. Co angler.
Got him. Got him. Come on. Ah, I lost the Bassmasters Classic right here on Inland Lake. Oh. As a kid, I used to do that, man. I'd come over here and I would practice sight fishing. I'd be like, Spaz Master Classic. You get them on here and you lose them like that. So, still as a kid, man, it's still in my heart. I try to set the situation up that it's the classics on the line. And, you know, you put yourself in that position. You get all tensed up. You get them. Hey, we'll call it, we'll call it close. I, I didn't get the Hank Cherry, but I, I got a Sunday, okay? I got a Sunday. <laughs> oh. Told you he's gonna bite. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you know, launching my early elite career, I didn't, I didn't know how far to go. I never dreamed that in 2004 I'd be uh, the Bass Master Elite Series Angler of the Year. And in 2016, I'd done it again. You know, bass had been my life. I took a chance with another league, and it didn't take long to realize what I'd missed, and, and that my whole life was bass, the Elite Series, that's all I dreamed about, and I and it was temporarily gone. And now that I, I'm back at bass, I'm back where I want to be, I'm back on the Elite Series, and I'm, like my, I'm full, I'm content, like I, this is where I want to be. But it, it enabled me to start reflecting back. Like when I got back to bass, I really started thinking about things that I missed. And now we're in this such an ironic time uh, in our country today as we, we are battling uh, the coronavirus and it, it's a really bad deal and everybody's missed some work. We've had tournaments canceled. So I've had more time in the last two or three weeks whether I've been recovering from the flu or whatever I was doing to reflect back, to think about the road that I traveled. Because sometimes I'm so busy I didn't have time to look back. And I, I called Thomas up and I said, man, the more I reflect back, I, I, I want to take you back to where I come from and show you where we planted the seed to get to the Elite Series, to grow two angler of the years, to grow me and who I am today. This is what it's all about. And during this time of our country, yeah, we have social distancing. They're asking us to stay, you know, don't be out in town. We're not, in the state of Alabama, we're not quarantined. We, we can leave our house, but they ask to do very, very minimal. I'm out here on the lake with nobody around me. I still am able to do what I do, but coming back over here is really, really humbling to me. It, it brings back a lot of thoughts about how simple it was back in the day when you just put a boat in the water and you cast at the bank. And the only thing you had and the only thought you had was, when am I gonna get a bite? And now it's much bigger. We wonder, you know, when is the disease gonna get, when, when will it get under control? When will we start back doing what we love to do? But a lot of people out there are in the same battle. Uh, the guys who are on the front line, hell, I'll tell you right now, I appreciate it. Nurses, doctors, ERs, cops, the guys are having to deal with this. Hey, hats off, true heroes. You guys are doing what you got to do. Today for me is a day of reflection, a day of understanding a little bit more about who I am. It's something about getting older, leaving bass and coming back. I feel like I have a better perspective now of what fishing is to me than I ever have. He come over to it. He's another one of them. He's not one of them fuzzy cruisers. Got him. Oh, cruiser, son. Take him off, too. I beat. I've lost the classic twice today. Twice I've lost the Bassmasters Classic at Linden Lake. Mm. I still dream about it. <laughs> now I dream about just touching him. But lesson learned. I've seen the fish when I come by, and I've done that so much as a kid. I'd come and I'd see the fish, and I was like, maybe he's not catchable, maybe he's not. And I'd swing around, and he's really not on bed. He's just playing around, and I would just learn where to cast, and it still works. He's still triggering bites. It's a pretty nice fish. Everybody tells you there's no big fish in Inland Lake. You can tell them they're wrong. You've seen two of them jump off my hook. <laughs> you 
you know, I'm telling my story today uh, to reflect back and show you guys where I come from. But it's really, it's really, I don't, it's, I don't even want it to be about me. I'm just telling you, if there's kids out there that have dreams, I'm just showing you, you can come from really not having a lot to get what you want with some dedication and commitment. Just like this time of struggle in our country, we're going to get through it. We're going to get through it. And it won't be no time and you kids are going to be out pursuing your dreams. You're going to be out chasing to be the next G-Man or, you know, Brandon Lester, whoever, you know, whoever your hero is. That's who you're going to be out there chasing that dream and fishing. So it won't be long. But until then, we want to live smart. We want to fish smart. We want to do what they ask us to do. But if you can get out and enjoy the great outdoors and you don't have to be around a bunch of people, saddle up, cowboy. Let's go. Let's go fishing. Let's stay outdoors. This is what it's, hey, this is the new Xbox right here. Tackle box, not Xbox. You know, I hope y'all enjoyed the day coming back to Inland as much as I did. It's uh, it's a, been a, it was a gravel road down here my whole childhood, and you can see fishing over here today sometimes could be a gravel road too. It's a lot of fishing here. I got a little humbled. I caught some small fish, and I got a hold of a couple of big ones. I just wasn't able to get them in the boat, but it really gets me back on my sight fishing game. It gets me outside. This is not a heavily pressured lake a great place to come relax so i'm gonna leave you with this anytime you can get out and learn something about fishing you're gonna be a better fisherman all you have to do in these uncertain times is just live smart and fish smart i didn't get to win the classic today but i got to pretend i was fishing it i got to work on my game always live smart fish smart we at the bass family say everybody just hold tight we're going to get through this it's uncertain times but we're strong we've lived through worse and we'll be back stronger than ever y'all stay tuned because bass masters live will be hitting the TV before you know it, and we gonna be blasted. Thanks for hanging out with G-Man, Inland Lake, we signing off.